Hanging out here in a comfortable hall with Ricky Newton. He has one. Let me see. I think you said, what, about 12, 11, somewhere in there all together? Yeah, somewhere in there over um, the years. Most of them here at Canandaigua, three at Genesee this year. And, of course, they're running Hoosiers this year. So uh, had to feel good to get a win there. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, our year up to that point had been going really that great. Um, and that kind of kind of turned it around for us. So uh, we've been running the Grit Series for quite a while. And that was the first one gotcha. for that series. So. Now, oh, so that was an American racer race. No, it was a regular Grit Hoosier Series. Oh, they run each now? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. One of the questions we've been asking people today, because this is going to be my next column in AARN, why do tires go flat? Let's start with a big picture here, Ricky. Why do tires go flat? I mean, you cut them down. Cut them down off somebody else's car, run through something on the racetrack. Uh, I mean, some of them, you get a pinhole, you sipe them or groove them a little bit too deep, you may not realize it. And then once the heat gets to them, that hole opens up and, you know, makes them go flat. A beadlock leak, something like that along those lines. It's a million different reasons. Okay. The track I was at the other night, probably 75% of the flats were left rears. And the track was, how do we like to say it? Had some character, I think is what everybody uses nowadays, instead of just saying it was rough. What right. happens? To, is, it, is it the low tire pressure? Is it, is it the bead lock? What you yeah, I happens? mean, part of that is, you know, on the left rear, you aren't really running a ton of air pressure. So if the car gets bouncing there, you catch a rut just right. I mean, you got to think the, the side force of the race car is quite a bit. So if you go against that light bead lock, or, you know, the light inner bead of the tire, you're going to pop that off. It, it happens. Um, you know, it's one of those things everybody, it, you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but it happens more often than probably what people think it does. Inner beads on the left rear, do a lot of people run those? Are they more likely to be run with one tire manufacturer versus another? Um, I mean, they're available. I know like a lot of late model guys run them. Uh, I don't know if they'd necessarily work on a northeast dirt mod, uh, simply for the fact that all of our stuff on the left rear, bird cage, brake calipers, brackets and everything like that seems to be a lot closer than what it is like on a late model or something like that and uh, I think the beadlock would actually hit on our stuff. Okay. Tell me about the differences between American Racers and Hoosiers. Let's start with uh, sidewalls is the biggest thing I hear is the big difference. <clears throat> yeah, sidewalls on the American Racers, I mean they're a lot softer, um, a lot more forgiving. Uh, they, How so? Uh, you can actually feel them when you drive into the corner with a uh, American racers on they're definitely a lot softer um, and that sidewall just gives it, it feels more I guess it bounce I okay. guess would be the uh, for lack of a better term there um, you know the car feels a little bit more bouncy but it's it, the sidewalls are probably one and a half times as tall as they are on a Hoosier you know so they, they flex and they give a lot I don't okay. think the uh, the supports in the sidewall nearly as much as is a Hoosier tire so is it fair to say then that, that those are more likely to be flat prone on a rougher racetrack? Or yeah. Or am I going too far? I mean, it probably doesn't help the situation any um, with the sidewall being uh, more flexible as to begin with. I mean, it could very well easily pop it off the bead that much faster. Okay. Uh, do I also hear you don't have to grind and sipe those? Yeah, I mean, you, you still do have to do some work to them, but not nearly as much work as you do the Hoosier tires. Okay. Yeah, because I've heard, like, like, let me see, you've got, I think, 10 tires here with you tonight, right, including the four in the car? Yeah. How much time a week does it take to get those ready? Too much. Like, I've heard even <laughs> eight hours, right? Yeah, I mean, there's usually you've got a, pretty much a whole night dedicated to just doing that kind of stuff. Um, it's time-consuming, but unfortunately with the Hoosier tires, I mean, that's what wins a lot of races is tire prep. Mm -hmm. Do we miss the old days, or were you even racing in the old days before tire prep? No, I mean, pretty much ever since I've been racing, it's kind of been a thing. It's been there. Um, it's been more prominent in the later years here. And when we first started racing, you pretty much hit them with a grinder, and that'd be it. Yeah, you didn't I mean, cut them at slightly. Right. Then. Now it's, you know, each tire gets two, three hours of prep sometimes. It's just wow. Amazing. So how are we running? Um... Fair, fair i guess i'd call okay. it um <clears throat> the results aren't really where we want them to be uh -huh. but uh we've been trying a bunch of different stuff to you know see if we can hit on something that nobody else has so i counted a little bit to that you know what i mean we've had some bad luck where just you know stuff's broke or and things like that but other than that you know it, it's all right we got 
um, that went over there at Genesee last Thursday. And so that helped, you know. I bet. That kind of boosted our spirits back up a little bit and took our mind off of everywhere else. So mm -hmm. see if we can turn it around here tonight. Yeah, so we're on a one-race win streak, huh? Yeah. All yeah. right. Hey, winning some, hey, some races, sometimes we don't even get that. So we'll take it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, like I said, it's better going, better than going the year without one. So. That's true. Well, maybe we'll get number two tonight, right? That'd be awesome. All right. Good to see you, man. Again, remember, like and subscribe. Here. You see the blue E in the corner? Click right below that. That'll subscribe. Doesn't cost you any money. Just let you know when we're doing cool stuff. Ricky, good job, man. Thanks. Thank you.